In this problem, we have to find the number of unique binary search trees from a given set of numbers. So here you will be given one input n. That means that you have numbers from 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to n. You have all these n numbers. How many unique binary search trees you can form? So if you remember in binary search tree, this is a binary tree, first of all, then it uh, maintains the search property that is uh, for every node all the nodes in the right subtree are more than this node and all the nodes in left subtree are smaller than this node so this is true for all the nodes in the binary search tree so let's see how we can uh, count the number of unique binary search trees you don't have to output the binary search tree you have you just have to output the count here is a mini example if we have values 1 and 2, we can make these two binary search trees. 1 is the root, 2 is the right, sub, right child of this. Since 2 is larger, it cannot occur in the left. Similarly, if 2 is the root, 1 can occur in the left subtree. Now let's take a bigger example. Let's take the example of 3. So we will have 1, 2, 3. This is 1. Take the mirror image of this. So 3 will be in the root, 2 is a smaller so in the left and 1 in the further left. Not exactly mirror but the shape is a mirror image. Then uh, let's take 1 as root again, 1 we have considered. So 2 and 3 both will lie in the right subtree. So this is one possibility and we had seen that with 2 we can arrange it in two ways. So you can see straight away that we are breaking it into a smaller chunks. We fixed 1 and then we are left with 2 and 3 and we already know that for two numbers there are two unique binary search trees. One is 2, 3, second one was 3, 2. So if you look at just this part and this part, this comes from this base case. So this is, we are done with root 1. Now let's take root as 2. Then we have 1, 2, 3. So we will make all of the, these numbers as root one at a time. So we made 1 as a root and we were left with two nodes. We arranged them. Then we made this 2 as the root. Then one is in the left, other is in the right. We have to maintain the search property. So with one node, how many ways we can arrange? Just one. And with zero node also, we will have one. So these are the base cases for one node, one, for zero, one. So when two is root, we have to arrange this in the left subtree and we have to arrange this in the right subtree. This can be arranged in just one way. This can also be arranged in just one way. So only one possibility when two is the root. Next, when three is the root, then in the right subtree there will be nothing since there is no element larger than 3 so it's empty here and in the left subtree we have 1 and 2 and we know that 1 and 2 can be arranged in two ways this is the first one 2 1 next is 1 2 again this comes from this case so now let's take a general case let's say we have n numbers 1 2 3 k is somewhere here then n is here so with 1 when 1 is the root how many possibilities are there in the left there will be nothing in the right we will have n minus 1 so for 3 what did we do uh, if we have 3 then we can break it into 1 and 0 and 2 one of the one of the nodes I will make as root so we will have one less value to take care so the sum of left and right should be n minus 1 and 1 is the root so total n nodes so when we have 3 we have to add all the 3 possibilities in one case there are 0 nodes in the left subtree so let's we have 1 2 3 if we make 1 as the root in the left we will have 0 right we will have 2 values so this is this case then we will make 2 as root then in the left we will have 1 right we will have 1 when we make 3 as the root we will have 2 in the left subtree these two 
and in the right subtree we will have 0. So in order to solve for 3 we need the values of 0, 1 and 2. Similarly in order to solve for the case of n nodes we will need the solution for 0, 1, 2, 3 all the way up to n minus 1. So you can see that uh, we can save this computation in some dp array of the size of n plus 1. So this is a dynamic programming problem. So we will start bottom up. First we know the base case till uh, 0 and 1. So we start from 2. So for 2 we can make first one as root. So always the sum of these two will be one less than this since one of them is root. So for 2 it will be 0 1. Here the sum should be 1 and 1 0. These are the only two possibilities. Let's write down for 4 for better practice. 0 3 sum should be always 3 then 1 2 then 2 1 and 3 0. Similarly for 5 you can get the idea when 1 is the root node we will have 0 in the left and 4 in the right then uh, 1 3 then 2 2 then 3 1 and finally 4 0. So if we know the solution from 0 till 4 we will get we can calculate the value of 5. And let's uh, look at uh, if we have a root node this is fixed and there are m nodes in the left subtree and n nodes in the right subtree all of them we have already solved since this will be less than the value we are solving. So how many possibilities are there if we can arrange this in m ways and this in n ways. Let's understand this with a simple counting problem. Let's say event A can occur in three ways. Uh, let's call it E1, E2, E3 or rather A1, A2, A3. And event B can occur in two ways. Let's say B1 and B2. Then uh, in how many ways A and B both events can occur together. So we have to look at all the possibilities a1, a2, a3, b1, b2. So it can be a will take one of these values, b will take one of these values. Total possibilities are take all the combinations. So a1 and in b it's b1. Then this is one possibility. Then keep a1 fixed and uh, take all the possibilities of b. So here this denotes this one, this one. So a1, b2. Then all the options are exhausted when this is a1. Then you take a2, b1, a2, b2. Then a3, b1, a3, b3. In general, if there are m ways in which this event can occur and n ways in, in which this event can occur, then together they can occur in m cross m n ways. Similarly, in our problem, when we are solving for n, let's call it f of n then uh, you remember this diagram that we have to take all the possibilities and add them so split it into 0 and 4 when first node is the root then when second node is the root then there will be 1 in the left subtree and 3 in the right subtree and so on their sum is always 4 so for general case fn it will be uh, let's let's write it first then we will sum add the summation so it will be 0 n minus 1 plus and we will see what is this uh, then f let's call it f prime 1 n minus 2 plus uh, 2 n minus 3 their sum is always n minus 1 all the way up to n minus 1 0 so this means that there are 0 nodes in the left subtree n minus 1 nodes in the right subtree so we can arrange them in f n minus 1 ways and this in f 0 ways so total way would be multiplication of those so it's uh, f k times f n minus k minus 1 
since their sum has to be n minus 1. So this can be arranged in fk ways and the right subtree can be arranged in this many ways. So together there are this many possibilities and k goes from 0 to n minus 1. So whatever value we are calculating we will run a loop from 0 to n minus 1 and we have already solved it since we are solving it from left to right. So overall time complexity will be for 0 for 2 we will need 1 uh, 2 calculations for 3 we will need 2 calculations for 4 we will need 3 calculations and so on so it's 1 plus 2 plus all the way up to n minus 1 so n multiplied by n plus 1 or n minus 1 multiplied by n that does not matter so order n square and what is the space we have used we will be storing the solutions from 0 till last value we will calculate from left and go till right and finally return the last value since we this was the asked in the question that we want to arrange this many nodes in binary search tree form so let's write the code for this so first we will write it in c++ so if n is less than 2 that is n is 0 or 1 then return 1 this is the base case and then we will have a vector of int let's call it s l and we are taking it size 1 more than n since we have a possibility of 0 nodes as well so that's why we have taken it as n plus 1 and now let's add the base case for 0 there is one way or one node there is again one way so there is one to one correspondence the index is from 0 to n and the values are also from 0 to n so no confusion here so this is the outer loop where we are calculating for uh, when n is this i and in the inner loop we will add all the values from 0 till n minus 1 like this form so this will be j or k So this we would have already solved since j is always less than i and next is j minus i minus 1 so that the sum of this and this is i minus 1 or it should be i minus j minus 1 so their sum is always i minus 1 so this sum the sum of all these pairs is always n minus 1 when we are solving for n so here i is acting as n and finally the last value of i will be the final n and the solution is accepted and if we see the time it takes 0 millisecond that is our solution is uh, among the top of the accepted submissions now let's write the same thing in java and python and everything else should remain same and the java solution is also accepted 
and its time complexity is again uh, zero millisecond. That is, we are among the top of the submissions. Finally, we will uh, write it in Python three. So these are the base cases. Then for i in range two two n plus one. and the python solution is also accepted